All right, this is my three-ton split system at the house. It is not performing like I'd like. It's an older unit. Um, it's a PSC motor, single speed. Wanting to address a few indoor air quality issues uh, and fix them and still use the same unit. Uh, so these are my issues. I live in a two-story house and in the summertime it gets really hot upstairs uh, and really cool downstairs because all the heat rises and all the air conditioning goes down to the bottom of the house. I want to fix that. Number two, the uh, air when it starts and stops is really abrupt in the ducts and it bothers me. I don't really like that. I'd like it to be more subtle. And number three, I suffer from allergies so I'd like to help those as much as possible. I'm going to cure all that, I hope, here, and think, uh, with a fan handler uh, ECM4 kit. It comes with a modulator, an ECM motor, and all the associated, cab associated cabling, including a temperature probe as well. Um, I'm going to be retrofitting that into my current PSC. I'm taking that out, the PSC motor, and putting in that ECM, and this kit, and it should fix all the issues. Here's the wiring diagram of the project. If you want to look at it more closely, freeze the video. First things first, turn off the power. I've got it turned off at multiple places. Um, I've got it turned off at the breaker and at the switch for this unit. All right, this is what's going to happen. Uh, I've got the uh, face off of the uh, unit. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be running, not necessarily in this order, but be running uh, power from here down through there into down through there and into here. I'm going to be disconnecting the current fan, which is right there if I have it correctly, 99% um, sure, and pulling the old PSC fan out. Uh, which is back there, if you can see. There you go, much better. Back there, pulling that P PSC out. Um, and I'm gonna be doing that, if you see that top right corner, uh, there's that screw, there's one in the other side that's just the same that holds it in position. I'm gonna be undoing that and you slide it back out. Um, but before you do that, uh, you have to undo that screw and that screw uh, from the top and slide this panel out, uh, which shouldn't be any problem at all. Um, the other thing uh, that's necessary to run the fan handler is this 120 volt to uh, 24 volt transformer. It's an additional piece, um, and they recommend that you wire it uh, using one of these. Um, so I'll be adding that as well. Now I've got it unattached, I'm pulling it out. The other thing, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but obviously after I get the blower motor uh, replaced, I'm gonna be rewiring all the uh, module for the uh, fan handler and all the associated wiring back in uh, as well. And of course, while I'm thinking about it, uh, you should always snap pictures of everything before you take it apart so that if you get to a place where you get lost, you can always backtrack. I'm attaching the fan from the motor, or sorry, the, the uh, fan from the board. Put a label uh, on the board where the common was attached, which was right there. You can see that arrow. Now I've taken out the screws on the blower motor over here, attaching it to the furnace and over here get a better angle now I'm going to slide it out a mid slide out right now um, can't put the camera at a good enough angle to get me while I'm sliding it out don't have enough hands so as you can see I now have the blower motor out so first thing you do is flip it over on the side that is not the one that I'm pointing at right now. So it's laying on that side, the, the opposite side, and then you loosen this bolt. Then you see if this freely twists, um, mine just fell down, 
Mine moves off and off, down, up and down on this spindle very easily, which is a good thing because it comes out easily then. Um, if yours doesn't, you put uh, some uh, PB Blaster or some kind of uh, uh, loosener on here. Then you flip it over and take the motor out. Before removing, I would suggest taking a picture of the orientation of your current uh, PSC motor as it relates to the... Uh, lower housing. So now I'm going to replace the motor and that requires taking these three out. You Took some time while this is out and easy to deal with to uh, place my uh, transformer where I wanted it and then I marked it. So I'm going to mount it back up and then I'm going to drill it in place because it will be easier that way. As you can see the blower is nice and clean. I did that by taking out that screw and the same one on the other side over here and then these two screws. This comes off and then that came out. Then I used evaporator coil cleaner to clean it all. Put the belly band back on uh, and uh, I've got the plugs oriented so from the front of that machine you'll be able to access the plugs. That would be the one tip I have. At this. Putting the uh, motor back into the blower. Notice how the uh, connectors, if I haven't said it already, they're facing towards where the front of the unit is going to... This is going to be facing towards the front of the unit so you can unplug and plug in the motor. Context. Make sure you get the... Uh, blower squirrel cage centered um, before you tighten down the uh, tighten screw. Tighten down the squirrel cage to the shaft. Blower motor is in place and secured with those same two screws that you took out to, to take it out. Obviously make absolutely sure you know what kind of voltage is coming in to your uh, furnace um, and the unit especially before you connect this connector. Um, if it's high voltage, you've got to do things to the wiring as stated on the installation instructions that come with the unit. Now, uh, I'm going to attach the control, uh, route those wires and plug them into the motor. I'm mounting it on this side of the furnace, so I ran the wire for the control module, that white wire, through the side and down through with the other uh, thermostat wire and it ends up back there on the outside part of the motor there's two plugs that's the the one that's farthest towards the cabinet and then the other one is simply a power cord the one with the yellow on it is a power cord um, and that just terminates with a plug a male plug um, and you'll see what I'm going to do with that later. We've got the control board mounted back in with those two screws from the top um, but then also I went ahead and drilled those two holes for the uh, transformer and I put some tape down to catch the metal shavings so they don't fall on your board and short stuff out. I have mounted the uh, dedicated uh, uh, ECM module control uh, 24 volts AC here um, and uh, I need to hook up the power uh, to these, power source, and then the 24 volts come out here and connect up to the module. Side notes. Number one, make sure your wiring is heavy duty and you figure out what type of wiring you need to use. You can't just use any wiring uh, to do this. It has to be able to handle the loads that are on it. Uh, number two, same thing for the surge protection. If you decide to duplicate the surge protection, don't just put any little three dollars, you know, what you think is a surge protector in there, and it isn't the same thing. Do your homework. Um, I'm not going to do that for you. You're going to have to do it on your own. Here's the wiring <coughs> coming into the Bryant unit, <coughs> excuse me, um, hooked into <coughs> the main power source after the switch, um, but coming straight into the unit, running down the power. <coughs> Uh, through here and down by the blower to a female connection 
since the motor came with a uh, normal plug on the end of it I would like to uh, keep it a modular situation so thus the uh, female plug that's attached directly to uh, surge protection that's not required that's just what I wanted to do this right here is attached to the motor this right here attached to the transformer up here <coughs> uh, and then from there uh, you've got your 24 volts coming out of there going up through here out the side and attached right on the wonderful ECM4 fan handler um, this of course I don't know if I mentioned it before but that's the uh, control for the motor it's not the power for the motor it's the control for, uh, for the motor the sensor way up there is been placed ran down and into where it says sensor imagine that um, so we're all hooked up before you test the unit it has to have this switch or one like it probably on your unit pushed in or nothing will work you'll uh, turn everything on and nothing will work and you'll think something's messed up so that's pretty simple make sure that's in make sure you have the covers on it'll automatically push any buttons you have in now that we're done we simply button it up We just now turned on the unit and the installation has gone without a hitch. Um, it's got the furnace light on constantly and it's got the IAQ on which means indoor air quality and it's circulating the air constantly throughout the house. The fan is so quiet you probably can't hear it down below but it's running uh, low and steady right now. Everything seems good. It's been over a week now since I've had this installed and uh, the issues that I discussed earlier in this video have been fixed uh, I ha no longer have heat collecting up in the top of my house in the summertime the AC is distributed real evenly throughout the house um, and when the unit kicks on and off it's no longer a huge rush of air it's it's real gradual nice and and uh, subtle and also allergens are always being filtered out of the air now which makes it a lot easier for me to breathe easy so I would recommend this unit for sure you can find out more about it at fanhandler.com with all the information there or ask your HVAC contractor